going on guys? <laughs> this is kind of crazy. First thing I want to say is I was the victim of crime last night. Two of my cars that were at the repair facility were stolen last night. This is the second time that I've been hit by crime this year. And as this year goes on, well, this, this year's almost over. But in 2022, unfortunately, many of you will be the victims of crime, petty crime, break-ins, and also with the surging murder rate. But essentially what happened was I uh, literally, I found both the cars because both the cars have the GPS on them and I've turned them off and I've let the police know where they were. So crime is continuing to spike up. I mean, I've been using this repair facility for years. This is the first time that this has ever happened to them. And what we're going to see as the economy continues to deleverage and lack of opportunity, or let's just go ahead and keep it a buck. There are many people who would rather commit crime than to do a low wage job. That's where we are, that's where we are. And as the economy continues to deleverage, because if you were looking on the newscast and the news stories, that there was a prediction that holiday sales would hit a record. And, you know, based on my video, Black Friday sales were down 70%. The retailers have not presented the deep discounting that people have become accustomed to. Uh, shoppers are kind of like turned off. They're like, hey, where's these crazy deals that we've been uh, uh, groomed to expect? And they're gone, they're not there. And this is another signal of we're moving from the phantom stimulus economy back to the real economy. Because I feel that this, you know, once this year is over and once we have the final numbers, this is going to be the worst holiday shopping in maybe 50 years. Because there's two things that are going on. First of all, a lot of people don't have money. And a lot of retailers are struggling. A lot of retailers are caught in this space of they've got items and they don't have items. Their most popular items, they cannot replenish them. So they're not actually slashing the price on these items because the replenished stock is sitting on a ship outside the coast of California or outside the coast of Florida, outside the course of Georgia. All of these shipping container situations are the same. They've got these ships out here just waiting to unload. So this is creating an incredible backlog. Like I said, I've got, this is one of the reasons that my car was, was stolen is that we were waiting on parts. And you know, I'm just sitting there like, this is crazy. This is crazy. Two cars stolen, two. So what I predict as this holiday season is probably going to be the worst holiday shopping season on record for many, many years. And what we're going to see, and let's talk about this crime. Um, I had someone break my window a few weeks ago just to look around inside my vehicle. And then I had someone steal not one, but two cars. Actually, they stole more cars. They stole more than my two cars. They stole actually quite a few cars. And one of the things that is happening is, let, let's talk about leaving the phantom stimulus economy. Uh, many, many people got addicted to the phantom stimulus economy way of life. You could live in a house, they wouldn't have foreclosed. You could live in an apartment, they wouldn't evict you. You could drive a car, they wouldn't repo it. And people, this went on for a month. In some cases, this went on for over a year for some people. And right now, people are being foreclosed on. I don't really see the a major foreclosure crisis. I see a foreclosure backlog. Because here, here's the thing that I am seeing in my business. 
it is incredibly hard to get things done. Like uh, I needed to change the address on my Wells Fargo accounts. I had to call them not once, not two, but three times to get that done. Because you have a lot of people who are not interested in doing their jobs. So we're in a really pernicious cycle of spiking crime, low inventory, people don't wanna work. I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I feel the recession that we're gonna have in 2023 is gonna be a monster. It's gonna be a monster because as you look at all of the signals, first of all, it is Christmas time. You know, it's the holidays and people are, should be spending money, but people don't have money. And uh, with my car rental business, funny enough, it is my higher end cars to stay rented. And I'm having like right now, pretty much everything that I have available is rented except for once again i have another car that was an accident and th this 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 is one of the most frustrating things about this business is i've got five cars i am waiting for the insurance company to do their thing five so as we look in this whole mix because like literally i have called this one insurance company six times and they've not looked at my car and one of the things that I am beginning to see with this supply chain shortage, there's a worker initiative shortage. It's just very hard to get certain things done unless you really, really stay on it. You really have to stay on it. And like today, uh, I got to find the car because at this count, I've had 12 people arrested. And one of the things I'm gonna do is type up an agreement and just put it in the car before I rent it out that you don't want to be arrested. If you find yourself unable to pay for the rental of this car, bring it back because it's not a civil matter. It is a felony and you could be arrested because I, I got this one situation that is really, really crazy. And it's just showing you how serious. Now, this is the thing. The economy, like I said, is deleveraging from the stimulus economy, right? And we're moving back to the real economy. And I feel in 2022 is where we're gonna make significant strides back to the real economy. And what does that mean? That means economic pain across the board. Economic pain. You're gonna see, like, I, I did say that I don't think, but I could be wrong because the foreclosures have started again. The forbearance is over and they've started foreclosing on people. And let's go ahead and talk about why are people getting foreclosed on? Because why aren't people communicating with their mortgage processor and working out some kind of deal? I'm gonna tell you why. The stimulus economy. Years and years ago, I saw this trend and I was a kid that when granddad died, grandma got in trouble because granddad paid the bills, earned the money, took care of the house. And grandma, she didn't have to do that. She just had to be the wife, right? I feel that this 24 month of stimulus, of pretty much babysitting human adults, humans, has robbed people of their initiative. And once again, I was in the military, and there was this thing that they would not let you take too much leave because you would lose your military bearing. And it was like 60 days, maybe 90, I forget what it was, but there was a limit to the amount of leave you can take unless it was terminal leave, which means you were getting ready to exit the military. So if you had like six months of leave and you were gonna do like what's called terminal leave, they let you do that because you were gonna go out. But many people have lost their military bearing. They've lost their initiative. They've lost their drive. And this is just going to make things so much worse because I am just looking at what's happening. Like I said, I've been the victim of crime two times in the last two months. And I'm kind of scared because I don't think this is going to be the last time because what's going to happen is the worthless people, the video I made, are going to start preying upon people who have. And this is going to be 
maybe like the Hunger Games. It, it's it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Like um, today, I went out and I ran an errand, and I didn't have my gun on me. And then I get this message that hey, two of my cars were stolen, and I'm just sitting here like, and this is making me rethink my whole car rental business because with a lot of these cars like these cars if there's a total loss because the cars were in the custody of the repair shop their insurance would pay for it but let's say i go to my office one day and find four of my cars gone and only have um liability you know basic insurance i will not be made whole so today i am i am getting ready to re-strategize my whole car rental business because I don't think there's a lot of people know that there's a car rental business there except the car renters and a few people around the office complex but sooner or later it's going to get out that oh there's some nice cars over here let's go check them out because one of the things i do is i don't have the cars prepped for people to pick up until i know someone's coming to pick up so most of the time the cars are locked and the key is not in the car but my fear is that I have to go ahead and redo my whole process because crime is going to continue to spike. Crime is not going to go down. It's not going to go down because with this stimulus economy presentation, people got used to it. Um, the CARES Act was, in my opinion, a presentation of socialism. And people really, really like social. They really, really like it. It's like, wait a minute, I can live in this house? You ain't gonna kick me out? I can live in this apartment? You're not gonna evict me whether I pay or not? I can drive this car? So people got a very robust taste of socialism. And a lot of people was like, I like that. I like how that tastes. I like how, mm, I like this. I like it a lot. So we're going to have a regrooming or reshaping of American mores because there's a lot of people right now, everyone who has a low wage job is struggling to find employees, but people don't have money. And you've got people who, instead of going to work at this low wage job, they will commit crime. This is why the crime rate is going to skyrocket. Scams, credit cards. Like one of the things that I've did, and I did it as a prophylactic measure, is I closed down some of my credit cards. Because uh, I, had, I had a lot of credit cards and it was just too much to keep track of. So I closed them down. I closed all the, the lower limit credit cards. And every morning <clears throat> when I get up, you know what I do? I check my personal bank account. I check my business bank account. And I check my credit cards to see if there is no weird activity because typically I will never ever use my, especially my business debit card. I will never ever use my business debit card to pay for anything because that will expose my business bank account to being scammed or some type of stuff. You know, it will have to be a super, super secure website like a government website or something like that. But once again, dudes and do that, prepare yourself. Like I said, I've been a victim of crime two times this year. And I feel that unfortunately, many of you will be victims of crime. You may have someone break into your house. And let me, let's have this conversation. <sighs> you need to get a gun. I know that you don't want to shoot anyone. I know that you don't want to take anyone's life. I understand that. I don't want to shoot anyone. Fortunately in my life, I've never had to shoot anyone. I will tell you there was a time years and years ago when I was at my warehouse and it was late at night and I heard all this ruckus outside and I go to the door and there's these four dudes and they're like trying to break in. And I'm like, look, y'all need to leave. I call the police, right? And these dudes, they started walking aggressively. Like they just like, hey, they started coming on me. And then I pulled out, I had a SIG 357, 357 SIG Magnum. And I pulled it out, cocked it, and popped off two in the air. And then they got in their car and they ran off. 
I don't know what their intentions were. I have no clue and I called the police and I told them what went down and then they told me there was a ring of robberies, a ring of robbers around who were breaking into warehouse. And more likely based upon my description, that was the ring and they, they were trying to catch them. So because I had a firearm and a full clip, I was prepared. Like I said, I've never shot anyone. I don't want to shoot anyone, but here's what's going to happen in the Hunger Games. People are about to get desperate. And I'm talking about crazy desperate, like supremely desperate. And this is like, let's, let's take the person, like my, the windows of my cars, uh, two of them are super, are limo tent. You cannot see in those cars. And someone broke the window and they went to the driver's side and they tried to break that window and that window didn't break and they went to the passenger side to try to break that window and that one did break. They could not see what was in my car. This is the level of desperation and as the economy continues to deleverage, and you're gonna have more desperate people. I mean, when I say desperate, I'm talking real desperate. And these folks are going to, like, uh, th this was happening when I was living in the house. This was on next door. This guy was at the gas station and this guy just sat in his car. He was at the pump. This guy just opened up the car, sat in his car and started, actually it was a woman and he actually asked for a head. So based upon the story, I think this person was mentally incapacitated because to jump in some woman's car and ask a woman you don't know for a head, that's pretty crazy. And once again, I was out in Sandy Springs. The number of homeless people have increased. So we're going to have uh, an increasing level of desperation. Like uh, one of the things I'm getting ready to do because it's becoming a problem. I've had 12 people arrested for stealing my cars. And I was having a conversation with someone, the crazy Range Rover story. And I was like, I had to explain to her because she said, my dad's a cop. I said, ask your father. And she talked to her father and her father's like, yeah, you can get arrested. She did not know. So these people are getting my cars and they're keeping my cars and they're not paying me because they don't think anything's going to happen to them. And now that she's talked to her father and it's like, because I was like, there's an active arrest warrant for your arrest right now. And the thing is, I have to cancel it. And unless you work with me to get my car back, I'm not canceling it. Because I've taken a very hard line stand. Like uh, this week, another woman got arrested. And, you know, I I'm just not playing with these folks because one of the things I'm gonna do is get rid of all the cars that don't have GPS because I got an older car that I have to file another police report on. And these people, they have a level of desperation, right? And they're hurting and they have needs and they're suffering. And once again, I am not a charity organization. This isn't, you know, Mac Daddy Charity where we will provide you a car for free where you could, no, no, we're not doing that. So, you know, in 2022, every time someone rent my car, there's gonna be, a, I'm gonna tape it to the steering wheel and it's gonna be like, don't get arrested. And I'm just gonna go through there and I'll tell them what happened this year because people are keeping these cars. They think it's perfectly cool to have a car three, four days and not pay it. I'll catch up later, but they're still driving every day. They're driving, they're driving. And, you know, like I said, it isn't as bad as it once was because I've really, really worked on it, but it's still a problem because people don't know the law. Because this chick was just like, why would you do that? And I was like, and then she had to talk to her father and then she found out that, oh, her freedom is in jeopardy. Because here, here's the thing. Let's say someone keeps my car for five days and don't pay me, just five days. I can file out a warrant for their arrest just after five days. Now let's say I get the car back, right? Does that warrant disappear? No, it doesn't. 
And I need to make that fundamentally clear to these people because they feel that there's nothing that's going to happen to them because um, this is what's happening with scammers, like scamming, like, all right, start monitoring your bank account, monitor your credit card, be on top of that because I've got credit cards I'm not used in a few years. So I'm not really worried about that. And I've got, you know, and mostly I've shifted my spend to mostly my business credit cards because I have four business credit cards and that's like 90% of my spend is business. And I've got one daily driver that I use for food pretty much on the personal side. So guys, monitor your credit cards like at least once a week. You know, what I do may be obsessive. It may be too much for you because I do it on a daily basis. I've been just wired that way because I know with my business accounts, if something funky happens, I have to be really quick on it. And this is why I have certain strategies where it's going to be real hard to get to my business accounts because I don't expose those business accounts to normal spend. I will never ever use my business credit card to buy gas or to, to get something at a convenience store because this is where a lot of scams happen because you go to a gas pump and you put your credit card in there and a lot of times they have these skimmers on there that will read your credit card and transmit your data to the criminal. So once again, this, 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 like you gotta be super careful with your debit cards. And I don't use a debit card, but I, I fear there's a feature where people can lock their debit cards, which I guess is better than nothing, but you gotta get away from using that debit card because especially in this scammy criminal environment that we're gonna experience in 2022, you will become a victim of, of, of crime if you continue to use that debit card. So what I would recommend that you have is, you know, you have your debit card, you use it to pull cash out of your bank or to do banking transactions in your bank. That's the only reason you have a debit card. And I would use a credit card for everything else. And also I'm about to give you the playbook. You need to have one daily driver credit card and you need to have two backups. So you need at a minimum three credit cards. One daily driver, that's a rewards credit card, maybe cash back or points, whatever you like, whatever floats your boat. And then you, you can have two other cards that do the same thing because this is something I've noticed. Sometimes I will put my business credit card in to get gas and it won't work. It just will not work for some reason. And then I'll have to put another one in and that one will work. So, because, you know, I'm doing a lot of spin with the business. So guys, you have got to be on top of your spending. You've got to be on top of your money. You got to be on top of your banking. You got to be on top of your credit. Uh, the other day, someone is using my social security number. I got an alert uh, from CreditWise that some chick is using my social security number. So in this 2022 environment, we're going to see an epic explosion in crime. An epic, an epic, epic, epic explosion in crime. So I am willing to bet you that once the holiday season is over, this is going to be the worst holiday spend on record. Now, why is that? We're leaving the phantom economy and we're moving back to the real economy, which is based upon real economic forces. And like you go to the bank and you don't have no money. You, you don't have no money. I mean, it, it's very black and white. You go to the bank, you got 500 bucks in there. You go to the bank, you have zero dollars. It's very, very black and white, very, very realistic. And that's what we're moving toward. And in 2022, we're gonna have most of America move back to the real economy, get away from this phantom stimulus economy. And I was reading the article because if you Google holiday sales, you will see most of the articles are saying, this is going to be a record year in holiday sales, right? And then you have to read the most record, the recent ones. Like I read an article that was printed up yesterday and it was saying holiday sales are disappointing, deep discounting, retailers aren't doing this. And I wanna I want to tell you why retailers aren't doing this. Retailers, especially the largest, the biggest retailers, 
They have predictive analysis software. They already know this year's gonna suck. They already know. And this is why Target, uh, a lot of stores didn't open up on Thanksgiving because they knew it was gonna suck. And as we go on, it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse and worse. Because one of the things that I am keeping my eye on is the crime rate, which I have been impacted. And once again, if you've been impacted, put that in the comments. Uh, this is going to be 2022 is going to be a painful year for a lot of people. It's going to be a very, very painful year. It's going to be economically painful for many people because people don't have money. And I feel that 2022 is going to be that year where people are going to go, oh, daddy government ain't gonna save me no more because that's the thing that happened the cares act like i said i made videos i didn't agree on that six hundred dollar you know extra that six hundred dollar stipend it was twenty four hundred dollars a month this was more money than these people made working you cannot give a person that kind of leeway and expect it not to alter how they live this is one of the reasons i will never date a stripper a stripper has been programmed that men are atms so if you're gonna be her dude then i don't care if this woman has real love and affection for you she's gonna be like hey you still need to because that's how she's been programmed she cannot have a normal relationship unless she really does a lot of work on herself. So when you go ahead and put out this stimulus, it alters people's thinking. And I feel because of the stimulus, this is one of the reasons that so many people are quitting their jobs and they don't have another job. Now, once again, in this economy, there's a lot of low wage jobs. And I don't know in terms of, let's say jobs, I don't know how many jobs there are between 75,000 to 100,000 a year. I have no clue what that is. I'll have to look that up. But there's a ton of low wage jobs that people don't wanna work. And like I said it before in this video and I'm gonna say it again. You've got people who would rather commit crime than to work a low wage job. And that's why the crime rate is going to explode. And I feel some good things are gonna come out of this. I think that police officer pay is going to jump up way up because they're gonna to have to pay people to deal with this segment of society. And they're gonna to have to pay them a pretty penny. So expect police salaries to go up expect anyone that's in the security um, security fields whether it's computer security personal security uh, these are going to be growth industries during this period because i feel that this period is going to go from <clears throat> like i said security police uh, guards these are going to be growth industries probably for the next 10 years because once we because this is what's got to happen. We got to leave, we got to fully leave the stimulus uh, CARES Act economy, right? And with that, it's going to come a recognition by the public that big daddy government ain't going to save you no more. So I feel that 2022 is going to be a rough year for a lot of people. It's going to be a very rough year for a lot of people. Now, I'm going to tell you who it's not going to be rough for. People who are willing to work, because right now there's a group of people that would rather commit crime than to work. And these people, like the folks who are stealing my cars and getting arrested, and I'm going to prosecute. Because here's the thing. I said, hey, you can't pay, no problem. Just bring the car back and they absolutely refuse to bring the car back because they don't think anything bad is going to happen to them. And I am, the, I am the bearer of true repercussions because I will prosecute these people 
And if they go to jail, they go to jail because from a standpoint of, hey, you have this car that you're not paying for. Just on that, we're, we're not even gonna go into the criminality of it. Hey, I can't pay for this car. You should, as a decent, normal person, bring the car back. They won't. You don't know why? Because they need a car. And this is part of the socialist um, bent of America that someone's gonna help me out. Someone's gonna take care of me. And in 2022, we're gonna have a lot of people who have those attitudes and that someone's gonna help me, someone's gonna take me out, so someone's gonna look out for me, and they're gonna run into the reality of that ain't gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. And we're gonna have people who are gonna be homeless. We're gonna have people who are going to go hungry. And, and the worst part of this is a lot of these people have children. And that's who are gonna be the most impacted from all of this because from what I'm seeing, if people don't make really good decisions from a financial standpoint. And you know, they'll go out, you know, they'll get married, she'll have a car payment, he'll have a car payment, he'll have credit card payments, she'll have credit card payments, they'll have a mortgage, then they'll go out and do something even equally stupid like uh, go ahead and finance thirty, forty thousand dollars. Then he's got student loans, she's got student loans, and it's just a lot of financial pressure. And this pressure is going to break some people. It's going to break some people because one of the things that I am seeing, and you know, since now that I am dealing directly with the lower economic strata, is these people have very bad communication skills, like. The, the deal with the Range Rover, I'll, I'll probably do a whole separate video on that because it's just crazy what happened with that. But lack of communication skills and more importantly, a lack of marketable skills. Over and over and over and over again, I see this, I see this. So 2022 is gonna be the big wake up year. Let's just say we're gonna, people are gonna wake up and realize but right now there are people who are getting foreclosed on and these people didn't have to be foreclosed on if they had took a proactive approach to contacting their mortgage processor and say, hey, let's work on something. Because during the stimulus phantom economy, you could have worked out any deal that you wanted to. And the fact that these people are being foreclosed on shows that they weren't proactive. And I don't feel that there's going to be and this, I may change my, because once again, I'm studying this because there was 5 million people in forbearance and there's like 1.7 million people in forbearance right now that are exiting forbearance. And it's kind of hard to say. I don't, well, I will say this with a great deal of certainty. This foreclosure activity is not going to crash the prices of housing. It's not going to happen. It'll take two years before it even touches housing prices. I feel that housing prices will stop appreciating at this skyrocketing rate. I feel that will happen, but it's gonna be still hard for first time buyers to get that house. And also something else that's gonna happen. I don't think we're gonna have a credit crisis because one of the things I've been doing is I've been looking, uh, Navy Federal, Citibank, US Bank, Chase Bank, they are giving out credit cards like candy right now. So I don't know at what point that's going to stop, but at the moment, credit is still flowing pretty freely. If you have a decent FICO score, you can pretty much get a lot of credit in terms of credit cards. You may have some trouble getting, you know, certain limits, but I feel in this current environment, anyone can get a credit card with a five or $10,000 limit pretty easily, regardless of your income, which is interesting, which is interesting. But once again, I don't feel that we're gonna have a credit crisis at the moment. And those who are well qualified will be able to get mortgages in 2022 and 2023 and 2024, 2025, so on and so forth. But 2022 is going to be a big wake up call. It's going to be a big, big wake up year. And once again, I'm going to say it, like I said in the last video, you need to get rid of your debt. 
you need to pare down. Like if you've got a car that you can sell for more than what you paid for it, get rid of it and get you a used car that you can pay cash for. You want to make these moves to protect yourself because it's gonna get nasty in 2022. It's gonna get really, really nasty. Like, you know, the gun talk. Like I said, I don't want you to shoot anybody. I don't wanna shoot anybody. But let's say you've done all of the right things in life and you're in a good situation and you wake up at two o'clock in the morning and there's someone in your house because they haven't done what you've done. I would rather you be in a position, a position where you can protect yourself, protect your family from one of the worthless people. Cause like I said, the number of worthless people is gonna exponentially grow. And the number of people who are going to try to take advantage of folks who are doing the right things, who went to school and got a STEM degree, who have a good career, who have nice things, live in a nice house, you're gonna be a target. Like I said, this is the first time that I've been impacted by crime in 12 years. And it's already, I've been impacted twice. And after I do this video, I got to go ahead and contact these folks and see if we can get one of these cars back. Um, because I, I know exactly where it is and I've turned it off. And the other one, the GPS is kind of messing up on it. So I got to wait and see if that resets. But man, yeah, like I said, this is making me rethink this whole car thing because people will be stealing cars like it's crack. They will. All right, so that's all I got for you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below and I'll talk to you in the next one.